So I also want to talk about how we need to advance um, enterprise risk management. Um, we as an industry, I think, have been very reactionary. The banks, I think, are reactionary. Silicon Valley Bank was a great example of that. You know, on Tuesday it was fine and Thursday it wasn't. Yeah. And um, how do we stop being reactionary, right? I mean, remember after Deepwater Horizon, nobody wanted to write offshore platforms. I had the data and I said, this is the third one since like 1960. Right. It's not right. It's not bad. Um, but this, 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 uh, the fear that takes over, um, it makes it like, okay, I'm going to change everything. But what you need is really robust enterprise risk management. That's, that's again, better than your competitors that you are doing better scenario testing, looking at data, taking insights from banking or other industries um, and applying them in insurance to to manage the risk on that side. And there's also a very famous investor who's also an insurance executive whose name I cannot mention, who's kind of famous for saying that when there is a meta claim like that, if the overall fundamentals are still strong, that's really when you want to bid on their their insurance because it's the pricing is very, very healthy relative to to your point, the actual risk being transferred. Right, right. The other thing, and I know this isn't as sexy as innovation, but what this industry needs to adopt, our industry needs to adopt, is consistency, right? Consistency on risk selection is, is, is critically important where, you know, if everybody in the team is making decisions differently, uh, how do you know what's driving results? How do you know what's making things great? If you have good results, you don't know what to do more of, right? If it's going right. badly, you don't know why and what to stop doing or change. Um, and when I think about um, that consistency, when, and in terms of what I said earlier about the market cycles and, and the market becoming more efficient, that consistency is going to have to be part of that. Yeah. Right. Because like we have seen in DNO in the last couple of years, you know, huge, huge rate increases for a couple of years. Then all of a sudden now the rates are down, you know, or, you know, low double digits and all this capital has come in, right? If, if everybody was actually making analytically based decision making, I don't think we would see that. Right. Because everyone would have a floor in terms of how low the rate can go and still be profitable. And, and we're not doing that as an industry. But I do have another question in one of the more um, fundamental commercial lines, you know, especially PropCat, right? We've heard a lot uh, about the frequency and severity of, of wind events over the past you know, number of years. Um, it's proven very problematic for a variety of reasons. Do you anticipate or foresee kind of innovative risk management solutions, very, very broadly defined here, being deployed in this area within the next, you know, five to seven years? Uh, that's an excellent question. It's something I have pondered a lot. I think at some point, you know, if, if frequency and severity keeps going the way it's going, it's just not going to be viable yeah. for homeowners. Who, you know, they can't afford the cover. I personally believe if you can't afford the hurricane insurance and live somewhere other than Florida. But you, you, you know, nobody's going to pay $900,000 for a million dollar limit. <laughs> right. right. Um, so I think what we need to do is, it, it, is, is rethink um, how we offer the coverage. It, we need to rethink how we're building. Um, you know, there was an example with Ian of there was a community within near near somewhere near Naples that that was, you know, barely touched, only like a couple of the shrubs fell over, right, during Hurricane Ian when everything else around it was 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 um, was destroyed. Hmm. So, you know, from the insurance perspective, on the insurer perspective, it's very difficult for me to think about a way that we can cover something where the certainty of loss drives the price to the point where people actually just won't buy it. That there's it, I think the fundamentals around how we build, where we build, have got to change.